Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. As we're all starting FC25, we need coins to buy players for our teams, try players out, maybe buy some fodder for SBCs, or even do a paid evolution. So today, what I want to do is talk through a bunch of different trading methods that you can use all year long in FC25, but of course are extremely useful right now in FC25 at the start of the year. Some of you may already know some of these, but they might serve as a good reminder and just give you an idea of what you may be trading with depending upon how many coins you have. We're going to look at budgets today of like 10,000 coins or less, upwards of 100,000 coins and more. Ways to make coins all the way through as you progress up in all Ultimate team. At the end of the video, I do want to talk about yesterday's content and some of the leaks, including maybe that Player of the Month Holland SBC that we might have today on Saturday. If you're excited for it, drop a thumbs up and of course subscribe if you are new. Now, let's get straight into the methods with the under 10,000 coin, the low budget methods. And if you feel like you're doing something wrong, if you're in this low budget range, don't feel like you're doing something wrong at all because we all start here. Now, guys, honestly, the best thing you can do if you're on a low budget, less than 10K, is go play some games. Go play some squad battles. Let the game work for you. Get some rewards. That's just learning the gameplay, getting some rewards, and even game bonus packs, and you'll be able to get yourself off and running. Now, once you get to a couple thousand coins, one of the first things in the early game I'm going to recommend is bronze pack method. Guys, this is actually with the way that the bronze packs are this year, and especially right now in the early game, how these players are selling. It is really easy to make profit just by opening packs, which is so fun. Now, there is a little bit of a method to the madness, and it's pretty mindless. You can just sit here and open bronze packs. But as you can see here, I packed a English center back, 64 rated, and it looks like he sells for about 350 on the market. I'm going to list this up for 350 and every single bronze pack that you do, you're going to list every single bronze card because it's even these sorts of cards that will sell for 200 coins that over the course of you opening 10s and 20s and 30s of these bronze packs, you will end up making your coins back. I believe even as we see here, okay, this card maybe sells for 200 pretty quickly, but as you can see here, I'm going to quick sell the rest of the stuff that is in this bronze pack. You do want to sell managers as well. Sell the players, sell the managers that sell for some sort of value. If you're trying to profit off of this, you can check a TIFO or something, but most of them don't sell. And then quick sell. I see I got 272 coins back from that bronze pack. If I sell all the players I just listed, plus those 272 coins i'm going to make profit every single time some packs will be better you'll hit somebody who's worth a couple thousand coins maybe five six hundred coins couple of them you'll make your profit back easy others of those packs you may not here we have an english left back clark he doesn't sell but we're going to list them up anyway uh, same thing for this center mid here now i'm not going to go through the rest of this pack just for the sake of time but you get the idea list up the players double check their price okay i am going to check this guy and good, it's good I did. He sells, right? Boom, that's 500 coins right there. And that is most of my coins back from this pack that I needed. I think all bronze center attacking mids are selling right now. So that's one thing to watch for inside of this. And boom, there we go. Another 300 coins of quick sell value. I easily made profit off of that pack once that 500 coin player sold, sells and then some of the 200 coin cards as well. Now, if you don't want to do that and you want to get straight to the market, just look at those bronze players that you were finding that sell. Like, guys, I was talking about center attacking mids. Some of the center attacking mids from other nations sell for more. This is your bread and butter if you're on a low budget. Like, this is incredible coin-making opportunity. Find a bronze or silver set of players on the market that are selling for a little bit more than the minimum price they can go to and start flipping and bidding and sniping and get on the bids like for these french center attacking mids they're all going for 800 coins what i'm going to do here is set a max price of 600 how many can i get on bid there's a whole bunch in on bid in the next hour that i could potentially get for a profit for a deal and then sell for a profit it's grindy it's grindy but it is very worth it to do to get up to that 10 20 30 coin range now if you're wanting to find players that are silvers which can be even more profitable than bronzes go into flipbin search by version silver and then sort by price high to low and this will help you find some silver players that are selling for a couple thousand coins that you can then go and bid on or find out maybe what sbc or what thing is out on the game that is making them sell for that price so i know it's grindy and a lot of you may have more coins than that but if you're in that lower tier range those things right there alone are going to get you a lot of coins going to build you build you up to like 20 30 40 50k in no time and then after that you can move into some of these middle tier 
budget methods. The first middle tier method, once you get to 20, 30, 40, 50,000 coins, I want to talk about solution trading. Look, there goes that 500 coin uh, left mid right there. I want to talk about solution trading. How did I sell this 80 rated women's USA center back for 3.7k? Well, she was going for that price because she was in the cheapest solution of one of the hybrid leagues, hybrid nations, or one of the advanced SBCs that is out right now. Since these SBCs require some basically knowledge to do and they're not super easy people go to footbin and look at these solutions and it's oftentimes guys the sbcs in here that show as the cheapest solutions actually are not cheap because footbin delayed maybe in five to ten minutes is enough time for these cards to go from maybe 350 coins up to three to four k in value or at least a thousand coins and you will see opportunities to trade with this card um, now, if you want to find some gold cards that are having some fluctuations like this all the time, so you don't have to just try to find it like this, this goalkeeper, how much is he right now? He's two, three K for this Italian goalkeeper. And on Footbin, it says he is 350 coins. Now this sort of player, you would probably want to add to your watch list because he's going to be continuing to fluctuate each and every day. Same thing with this Savage card, 81 rated. He's already been sold multiple times for two to 3,000 coins. His price fluctuates as his solution becomes the cheapest and then Footbin updates and it's not the cheapest anymore. So that is a way of trading that is confusing for some and it's a little risky and it's kind of hard. One of the hardest methods, but it can be extremely profitable. You can make millions off of that method if you time it right and if you do it right. Now, something that's a little bit more fun and grindy if you're in the 20 to 50K range would be chemistry style trading. This is one that flies under the radar every single year, but especially in the early stage of the game, this one is fun to do if you just want to get active on the market, do a bit of searching and sniping, and kind of like, I don't know, find some deals. This has the fun find some deal aspect to it, right? I'm going to use Rolfo as my example here. I think Rolfo right now is about 24,000 coins. She is. What does Rolfo sell for with a shadow, right? You apply chemistry styles, and these are usually making the price of the card more expensive. 30,000 coins is the cheapest Rolfo with a shadow. There's a lot of room for profit in there. It may not be a guarantee that she would sell very quickly, but that's the sort of thing you could do here. You find a defender, you check the price of that defender with a shadow on the card or an anchor potentially too, because sometimes they will sell for a little bit more with the anchor. You can see there's one there for 26K, so not so much for her. Or you can do this with attackers with hunters. You can do this even if you're in like the 10,000 coin range. Somebody like Joao Felix, who's 2,000 coins, probably sells for an extra at least 500 to maybe 1,000 coins with a hunter. You don't have to buy the hunter. You buy the card with the hunter already on it, and people will pay that extra couple hundred or couple thousand coins when they go to buy that player for their team, because who wouldn't want to buy a player with the chem style already applied you can do this with bidding as well that's a very very good tip as well because a lot of people just bid on cards to try to get the lowest price sometimes you can get the lowest price or even lower than what that card is buy it now selling for on the market here's a roll with a shadow not low enough but you get what i'm saying bids and snipes in chemistry style trading is a fun way to keep cards active and flowing in and out of your club as you should be getting sales pretty consistently with that method and then also you can constantly be searching the market, trying to snipe players and get deals. Now, speaking of bidding, I want to talk about mass bidding, guys. Mass bidding is one of the most underrated and slept on trading methods every single year because it's not pretty. It's not glamorous. It's just good old grindy bidding on the market. But at certain times of the day when there's packs that have been released or maybe even rewards like weekend league rewards, rivals rewards, since there's going to be tradable packs inside of those squad battle rewards even coming out tomorrow, that's going to be a great time to get on the market and bid on players. And I think right away, one of the first sets of players that I think to bid on would be fodder, especially with fodder going up in price yesterday. 88s are now 12,000 coins. You might even be able to get 88 rated like Guru Riten, Endler that are 12K on the market. You could win them on bid during a point of supply, maybe for like two to 3,000 coins under their lowest buy it now, because a lot of people just want the card now. They want it straight away. They don't want to have to wait and try to grind out bids. So if you do that, you're going to guaranteed make profits. And it works the best with this fodder, especially on like promo Fridays. I know some people in the stream that have been doing this for the last couple of years, they will sit 
on a uh, promo Friday on the market and just bid on fodder. It's not glamorous. Like I said, it's a little bit of hard work. You're just there bidding all the time, but these guys become millionaires so quickly because they can just bid and they can sell so many of these cards. People are always doing SBCs, especially later on in the year. So don't forget about mass bidding on fodder, or you can do anything else. You don't have to do it just on fodder. You can go back to those players like Joao Felix, Timo Werner, who we, tr we were trading with on the stream yesterday because a lot of people are buying those cards right now. That's what you want to look out for. You want to be mass bidding on stuff that sells, right? That's the whole key. If you're going to mass bid on it, you need people to buy it. And those are the types of players you could do it on. You could mass bid on Gavardiol. Maybe you can win him on bid for like 5K or even 6,000 coins, but then sell him for 7.1 or 7.2, right? Of course, maybe you pay a couple extra coins for a card with a chemistry style and you implement some of that chemistry style trading there as well. That's the sort of stuff you can do on the 20 to 50K method. And then once you build up coins from that, which won't take very long because you'll be making profits pretty easy, you can get to the fun stuff, guys. And that is in your the 100K kind of price range and above hero and icon trading. It's all about the fluctuations. And this is really, really, really going to be a little bit of head knowledge combined with footbin graphs. Guys, footbin graphs are so helpful when determining what players go for usually on the market. How do you know a player is going to go up in price? I'll, I'll say this to start off. If you've been trading with silvers and bronzes, you know that like bronze center attack in mids, from France go from 600 coins to 1,000 coins every single day. At some time of the day, they go up 400 coins and you can make that profit every day. You can apply that same sort of trading to icons. I bought this Robbie Keane yesterday for 169K, sold him at 193 really quickly because I knew that was too cheap. I knew that this Sophia Smith was going up, bought her at 188, sold her at 233. That's a little bit of fluctuation trading and knowing general market trends. But with the icons, you don't even have to, you have to pay attention. But you don't have to worry as much about the general market trends on just a normal day because these cards are going to go up and down all the time. People always love to try out icons and heroes and they fluctuate a lot. Like let's take this Petit for example. He's 314,000 coins right now. Let's just say for example that he sold at 350 at one point yesterday a couple times and his low point was 300k. That's a fantastic card to trade with because if I'm selling him at 350,000 coins, my tax on that card is going to be about what was that going to be like seven and a half thousand coins that is not that much tax um, on a card so what i'm going to be able to do then is go wait that's not correct on the tax that is totally not correct a 300,000 coin card is going to have 15k of tax yeah so you have to multiply the tax and i'm rusty because i have not been trading with icons or heroes for a long time but there's five percent tax on every single trade so make sure you're doing your math right but 5% tax on the trade. If you take that minus the price of what you sell the card for, that's how many coins you're going to be getting back. So if I was going to buy Petit for 300 and sell him for 350, then boom, you'd be able to make your profit back there pretty nice. And that'd be a pretty solid profit. So just kind of calculate your tax into things and have confidence, man. It's all about the timing. If you've been watching a footprint graph and that graph goes like, oh, they're going to go down here to a certain price and they're going to bump back up. This is over a number of days, but this happens on a daily basis all the time. Let's say like he goes 430 up to 473. That's not really that great of a trade. But, you know, just watching the footbin graph like that, if it did it the day before, it's probably going to do it the next day. Again, you have to remember a little bit of the overall market landscape, but icon trading is very lucrative and it's just fun, man. There's just so much fun to it. Just don't forget your tax, all right? Don't forget your tax. Calculate that. Grab a phone calculator if you want to double check in, which I will be doing to start off this year because obviously I can't do the math in my head yet. So fluctuation trading in general, if you're doing that with the icons and heroes, that opens up a whole wide range of possibilities. Just like yesterday on the stream, we were talking about informs. Informs were moving like crazy on the market and they were going up and we knew they were going to go up. So we had some uh, investments in that area of the market and those cards went up a lot. And here we are. Messi was 250. Now he's 300,000 coins and a little above that. If you learn how to fluctuation trade on the market, with those heroes and icons. You can do that with promo cards once we have promos out throughout the year and so many other special cards. That is the most fun way to trade on this game in my opinion. And that's probably how I make 75% of my coins throughout the whole entire year. Notice, as I'm talking about all of these methods for low budget, middle budget, or higher tier budget, as we get into the early stages and move on through these first couple days in this game, none of it covers investing, right? We're not talking about buying a player 
and holding on to it. I'm going to cover investing as it pertains to the content that is released each and every day in individual videos. As we release a video every single day, we talked about fodder in yesterday's video, right? With the Alaba that was coming and the Erling Holland that is leaked. I sold my fodder so I could get into other trades. I bought all these 88s for six and a half. 7k max sold them for 10k yesterday i know i could have sold them for more but i was in it for the quick money so i could go out and make more coins with sophia smith and this this keen who's actually a lot more now because the market's going up a bunch so none of this investing has been covered here guys this is just sit down i want to make coins I'm going to get on the market and trade a little bit. So hopefully that helps a lot of you guys out because I know so many people right now have been asking, Nate, how do I make some coins in this game? Well, I just gave you a lot of good options depending on what coin range you're in to get those coins up. So put in a little bit of time. The market's going to be great today on Saturday and get those coins. Now, let's talk about yesterday's content on Friday really, really quick because there was some interesting stuff. We got to start off with the David Alaba, who is an objective but he's an SBC, man. They, they did this last year in FC24 at the end of the year with that transferred to ROM card. I don't know how I feel about this. Basically, the SBC is where all the cost of the card is. 86 and 87 rated squads. It's around 100,000 coins. And then you have to go complete the objective to actually get the Alaba card. I know for some of you guys, you're like, oh, Nate, it's, it's easy. It makes sense why EA is doing this because they want you to play games. They don't want people on the web app to get this card. Well, this card is in objectives. People on the web app can't even get the card anyway because that is locked. I don't understand fully. There must be a reason, and we just don't know it. But EA must have a reason for doing this. But they put the flashback Alba in objectives. You have to do the SBC and then get the uh, objective done by playing one game. The card is exactly as leaked. It is a really sick-looking card. Left back, position change. He's got four-star, four-star. He can play center defensive mid and center mid. Now, the only problem I have is with his roles, and we care a lot about roles this year, and maybe I'm being a little bit too picky. He's got a role plus plus for a left back, false back. Honestly, 84 pace for a left back would maybe work right now, but I would love it if he at least had a role plus in the center mid or center defensive mid areas of the pitch, because then I would want to use him there, especially later on in the next couple of months where I still feel like it would be worth me spending the coins and fodder on this card right now for me to use him for a while. His play styles look good, for a center midfielder, but he doesn't have any roll pluses or roll plus pluses there. And that for me is probably going to make me not want to craft the SBC. Unless you're a Madrid fan or you just want this card because it's emotional and you remember how good flashback KDB was. I mean, hey, this card could end up being insane and I'm just, you know, wrong here. But I don't know. That for me is one that I think I'm going to skip straight away. I don't think the price is that crazy for that type of card. I just think for me, it's not the quite, quite the type of player meta wise that i'm looking for at this very time he doesn't link really great in my team either so i just wanted to mention that also yesterday we had another objective player with world tour robert sanchez of course he was leaked he's finally dropped this one for me is cool they didn't upgrade his reactions which is a little bit unfortunate but i got a goalkeeper yesterday from pax if you didn't check out the second channel video yet make sure you check that one out it's a banger we had a fun one yesterday for sure and we had some decent pack pulls so the rtg is looking a lot better and i don't need a goalkeeper anymore so this one i probably won't end up doing but if you want a cheap prem keeper it's really easy to do when you're playing your squad battles games six spanish players in your squad a couple other objectives boom you get it done easy easy and then the other piece of content that we had yesterday that was noticeable was evolutions guys uh ea dropped the first paid evolution of the year and it's a cosmetic evo this is getting mean so much basically pay thirty-five thousand coins or 400 fc points to make your already evoed card purple i don't know why this is a paid evolution um yeah to me honestly does it make a whole lot of sense no is there going to be somehow this is roped into evolutions down the line that you wouldn't be able to complete if you didn't do this one maybe but there's no hints or no like teasers about that so for me this one is just not really smart i don't know what i would do with this maybe later on the, down the line if you have like a team with a purple kit and it looks ki like sick with the kit and the color of the card maybe it's something that you do but for me right there that one's just kind of laughable at least right now especially in the early game when we really don't want to spend thirty-five thousand hard earned coins on that the other big thing from yesterday's content was the server issues man everybody's out here playing rush and it seems like ea wants to play rush us to play rush so much that maybe they shut down like the matchmaking or something no i'm just kidding but 
there were a lot of issues yesterday with the 10 hour trial and also with um, matchmaking issues on online modes. Even in Rush, people were getting kicked out at the end of matches and rivals, you couldn't even find a match. Now, I don't know if this has been fixed or not. They haven't tweeted that it's been fixed, but the menus so far this year have been the biggest problem of the game. Rush is awesome. Like I'm having so much fun with Rush. It sounds like so many people are having fun with Rush as well, even though they changed the entry requirements to the tournament, which I know a lot of people are frustrated with max 79 because it was max 88. But honestly, it's better this way with everybody getting onto the game. I think it's a lot fairer and it's actually really fun to be running around on the pitch with 79 rated cards or below. Um, and especially playing with friends, getting those doubled rush points. Still, Rush is, rush is carrying at the moment. It is actually so fun. That is the game mode that I like to play the most and want to play the most. Boom, as we get a sale right here, perfect. Trading method opportunity. This is a hero trade. I picked up McManaman for 77,000 coins on a bid. I knew that he was uh, about 80K yesterday. He went to 100. So I was like, you know what? He's probably gonna go there again. Picked him up at 77, sold him at 107. That's a really good PAT on a 100,000 coin card. Anyways, back to the market for just a second. You saw that Sophia Smith. I bought 188, sold for 233. The meta tier market yesterday. Boomed. And this is why we were saying in yesterday's video and on stream yesterday that the top tier most meta cards still have room to rise. And that is exactly what started to happen yesterday. Neymar was 130k. He's now 180. And a lot of these cards just kind of continue to trickle up. But it's the most top tier meta, those high rated players in specificity guys like Cole Palmer, Yikeres, those types of guys, those middle tier, since there's less new people that are coming right onto the game right away. And since those cards are already so cheap, you're kind of not seeing as many of those. How much is Neymar? Oh, Neymar is not 180 anymore, 190 almost. He's still rising in price. The market is continuing to rise. It's really going up guys. A lot of the top tier meta is booming. Um, Informs, out of packs, icons, heroes, meta golds, high rated. That's the stuff that is doing good. The stuff that is not moving as much is the lower rated stuff. That stuff that, remember in the Keeper Sell video a couple days ago, we were listing some of the players like lower rated that were sells. Those are the types of like Doku. I think Doku was over 20K yesterday. Now he's 18. Again, footprint prices are a little bit sus. So you take those with a pinch of salt. We're going to double check that one in game. Footprint has prices now, but they're not up to date like instantly. So they're still figuring it out. That should be ironed out pretty quick. Menus are still atrocious on the game. Doku is actually like 20,000 coins, but that's the type of card that I would be selling right now, especially because even today on Saturday and tomorrow as we get into Sunday with the first rewards period of FC 25 with the squad battle rewards being given out, these types of players are near their peak and I would look to sell them very, very soon. But again, that high tier, Sun, Neymar, um, you know, those other types of players, Guru Ritin, who else am I looking at on the popular page? Holland, even though he's got the potential SBC, uh, Mo Salah, how much is Mo Salah? Mo Salah yesterday was 257,000 coins. I think he went above 300K. He is still above, he's 320. What a rise, like the top tier market's rising and I think it can continue to rise a bit more. The only thing we'd have to watch out for today and be careful with is if EA drops something crazy and they do something that we are completely unexpecting in terms of store pack supply or some sort of tradable pack supply SBC. That's actually the biggest thing that could hurt the market and it would hurt the market on the lower tier. A tradable pack supply SBC would be the biggest thing to hurt prices right now. So that's what I watch out for today. Now, speaking of Saturday content today, we do have a massive leak. Erling Holland has been leaked once again. We mentioned it in yesterday's video and we're here again because it hasn't dropped yet. He's getting a POTM card, which is crazy because EA originally said that there were not going to be a Premier League POTM SBC for this month. But we have this one and it is confirmed he's going to be a 92 rated. The question is, when is he dropping? Player of the months for the Prem almost always drop on Fridays. Not that case this time because he wasn't dropped yesterday. We had Alaba instead. Could be any day this week, to be honest. Could be any day. I would think it'd be pretty soon, though, with all these leaks. And since people say they have the leak of the rating of the card, which is 92, and also Foot Sheriff is saying here, it's almost confirmed that he will be the same way as Alaba as like an objective slash SBC. So we'll have to see on that one. That'd be very interesting. But this is going to be an expensive, expensive card and fodder is already up for it. I don't know 
how you're going to afford this, but it's probably going to be out for a month. So if it ends up being worth crafting, we'll have to decide that and we'll have to see. But that's a big SBC. Not that it would impact the market a ton. It would maybe impact some of the really expensive cards a little bit and maybe some of the top tier, maybe a slight dip. But how many people are going to actually run to the market, sell what they have to go and do the Holland SBC unless it's crazy value? I don't think that's just going to be like a wow type of SBC. And maybe you start crafting to it over the course of this next month if you're a City fan or if you really want a boosted version of Erling Holland. But an actual leak that maybe has more market impact for the here and now is the center attacking mid evolution that was leaked yesterday as well. Maybe you saw cards like Javi Simons and Pedro Gonzalez going up on the market after this leak. It's a max 90 pace center attacking mid with 83 max overall that's the leak as of right now so kudos would fit it and like you like i mentioned javi simons was one who fits this evolution allegedly based off the leak he would probably look pretty good off of this we don't know what the evolution gives no information regarding the limits either but watch out for this it was not dropped yesterday this could be a really good evolution though and this is one of the first opportunities we may have to invest in an evolution off of a leak or imagine when the evolution comes out going on the market and seeing who fits it and then watching prices go up from there. So that's something I wanted to mention because I honestly think that this Pedro Gonzalez with all the hype around Yikerez, if you can get this guy for like a thousand coins, that's like a no risk investment. So take that with what you will. But uh, whenever this evolution drops, that's bound to be a very interesting one. And then the last thing I want to point out in today's video is this pack code, this is like one of the first pack code updates to FC25, which is kind of uh, exciting, at least in my opinion. A 77 times 2 pack has been added to the code. This is 100% our first upgrade SBC of the year. Question is, when is it dropping? Today on Saturday when we had some upgrade SBCs last year or on Monday when we had more of like the cheaper 81 plus player pick type of upgrade SBC. Not sure on the answer to that question, but I think we're going to get this here in the next couple of days. I've been doing gold upgrades, guys, and they are kind of cracked. So maybe a 77 times two would be better. Maybe it would require bronze, or not, sorry, not bronze, common cards instead of rares. But that would be something we'll have to keep an eye on here as we watch the market and keep an eye on things. Not that we're going to really be excited about doing an upgrade pack when there's like nothing in packs at the moment, but I'm telling you, those gold upgrade packs are actually pretty good. And if you want to see us open some more, check out the second channel. I'll link that above once again. You can see all of our progress from yesterday with the trades, the investments that we made, and the pack pulls that we did have. But that's going to be the video for me today, guys. I will see you in a Twitch stream tomorrow on Sunday and another video tomorrow where we're going to talk about the impact of squad battle rewards for sure and how the market maybe is going to a peak. We might be seeing some of the highest prices today on Saturday, tomorrow on Sunday, and then things might start to tail off and we might need to sell a few things. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But if you enjoyed this one, drop a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nathan for the Count and I will see you guys in a video tomorrow. Peace out.